Hello kids, my name is Ariel. And I'm Ansine. And welcome to another Sunday where we'll be carrying on with our cross training series. And today, what did we talk about last week? So last week, we looked at having discipline in how we make decisions so that we can make decisions in a way that God wants us to and to really follow Him in whatever we decide, whether it's a small decision or a big decision. And this week, we're going to be talking about service. So not service like you get at a restaurant <laughs> or service like when you serve a like table tennis ball or something. No, we'll see exactly what service means as we read it in the Bible in a while. But first, Ariel, what time is it now? One of my favorite times, it's time to play a game. In this episode this day we'll be playing a game called indoor scavenger hunt riddles <laughs> that's a mouthful but what it is is we're going to give you a few clues and you're going to be looking around your house to figure out what exactly we're talking about so let's get into the game yes and if you know the answer we want you to shout it out loud to everyone sitting around you or maybe see if you can run really fast to go and get these items yeah okay that'll so be fun i'll read the first clue and then we carry on from there hey? all right First clue, here it is, the riddle. I willingly lay on the floor. I welcome you at the door. What am I? Mm. Okay, what's the next one, Ariel? on the floor. Okay, <laughs> next one. For the movie, you shall pop some corn. Mmm, yummy. When it's ready, the buzzer will warn. Oh, Ooh. I think I know what that is. Mm. Do you know, guys? <laughs> All right, here is riddle number three. This flat box houses color and sound. In the living room, it can be found. Hmm. Hmm. It's a good one. I like that one. Okay, number four. I will keep your books safe in a pack. Zip me up before slinging me on your back. What am I? Oh. All right, and our last riddle. Are you ready? Are you ready, Ariel? I'm ready. Okay, here it goes. You have one, probably more, each with a knob and even a lock. Hmm. When company comes, you will hear a knock, knock, knock. What is it? All right, we hope that you got all of them right. And now we're going to move into another time of fun, but also a time of praise. So we want you to sit or stand however you feel comfortable. You can sing out loud or you can just sing the words quietly in your heart as we sing together to praise God. Tell Him how awesome He is in this next song. In my doubt, God give me faith. In my words.
James, I work in the Rosebank Union Church, and I started working here on 2018, if I remember, doing a gardening. I started if it's possible to have a like demand job, then I said, okay, you have to wait a little bit. At the first time, I was not having a, like a patience, but if you wait, you're going to get something in a good way. In the process of that, I learned a lot of things, then the church then like, this is an opportunity, you can come and do jobs in the Prospect Union Church. I end up meeting different people like Brad. I was kind of person that if I'm doing something at the same point, I have to see the results. But Patrick teach me and said, James, you have to put yourself to rain. After you rain, then you can see the results on what you do. I asked Brad to like to help him in, on Sundays, uh, like to do cameras. It's one of the things that I love so much in, and that I didn't have a like a qualification. And then he said, okay, fine. We can make arrangement on Sundays. We're going to train you to do cameras. But I didn't expect to handle the cameras for the church. Then Brad asked me, James, can you do a sound? I said, but I think you have to maybe train me at the same like you do like uh, for the cameras. Then he introduced me to Phil. He teach me a lot and that I'm on the process that still learning because he's having a lot of information that <laughs> I even sometimes I don't understand. I'm surrounded with a good people and because that's why I'm here. And I thank God because of people that they teach me and they understand my situation. Wow, wasn't that great? It's always so interesting to see how different parts of our lives require discipline, even different careers. Now with all of that, Let's just take a moment to stop and pause and breathe while we look at what we're focusing on this week. While you pause and breathe today, I want you to read this psalm for you. Listen for anything that stands out to you and allow yourself to be comforted by the Word of God. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 2. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you that we don't need to fear because you are our ever present help in any time of need. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything you are to us. Amen. Our reading today is from Philippians 2, verse 1 to 5. So does belonging to Christ help you in any way? Does his love comfort you at all? Do you share anything in common because of the Holy Spirit? Has Christ ever been gentle and loving towards you? If any of these things have happened to you, then agree with one another have the same love, be one in spirit, and in, in this way, the way you think and act. By doing this, you will make my joy complete. Don't do anything to only get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. None of you should look out just for your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. 
Alrighty, good morning cross trainers. I'm so glad you're here this morning. I hope you've got your shirts, your exercise shirts, your shoes. If you've got a smart watch, you can start that because we're here to cross train. All right, let's get that heart rate up. Let's go, let's go. Come on people, stand up, let's go. Uh, yeah, Ansane? Not cross trainers like exercise. Oh, cross trainers as in Bible cross train. Oh my word. Okay, um, hang on. I, I brought that stuff as well. It's okay, we'll start again. Whew, okay, thank goodness I brought all this stuff with me. So I've got my Bible, I've got my message, so we're ready for that as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, if you were about to exercise, that's awesome. I do love exercise as well. That's a sneak peek about me. But if you don't know me, my name is Brett France. I'm on staff here. I'm, I'm the next-gen pastor. I started as that role in January, and I absolutely love working at Rosemary Union Church. And I'm so thankful that you've decided to watch church with us this morning. Uh, or maybe you're watching this a little bit later in the afternoon. Whenever you're watching this, I'm so glad you are here, our little cross trainers. Not exercise cross trainers, but cross trainers because we train with Jesus. And so we are looking at uh, a whole lot of rules about how we can live our lives in a way that glorifies Jesus, a rule of life. And so today we're going to be looking at service. How can we live a life like Jesus in the way He served us? Us. And now I don't know about you guys, but service for me is often a, a hard thing. And what does that even mean? Is it like when you go to a church service or maybe a, your school service or something that's going on like that? No, this is a completely different kind of service. Service is when you do something for someone else for absolutely nothing back when you serve someone. And so we're gonna look at the way Jesus served us. He did stuff for us wanting nothing in return other than our love and worship of Him. And we're gonna try to understand what that means to live a life of service towards others. And so we're gonna hear, I'm gonna tell you guys a, little, a couple of stories, which I think are quite cool and fascinating. And then from there, um, we're gonna look at uh, some Bible verses that help us understand what it means to have the mind of Christ, which means to think like Jesus thinks. Um, and then from there, I hopefully will give you some practical examples of how you can serve and love those around you. So the first story I wanna tell you guys is about a a young boy um, who was at school, he was in the grade eight. So I think some of you guys, uh, you are, you know, you're not in high school yet, but I know you're really excited for that day that you do get to high school. And so grade eight is when you're like the, the youngest person in the school. You have those grade 12s or, matri or matrix who are, you know, the, the big guys, they're the prefects, uh, the big boys and girls. And um, I remember coming in and being a grade eight and just looking up at these big adults and thinking, oh my word, I can't believe I'm in big school. And so this is stories about a grade eight boy. Um, and now he was in a school uh, where the matrix, the grade, the grade 12s were writing an exam. And so what happened with this, this, um, this young boy was he was walking um, through the halls and there was a quad and like an open area outside one of the big halls. And the, the grade 12s were writing a three hour exam. Imagine that, a three hour exam. I'm so glad I don't have to write exams anymore. And anyway, these, these, uh, these grade 12s were writing the exam and when they arrived for the exam, the weather was beautiful. It was a sunny Joburg day, it was beautiful. And so they put their school bags down outside in the quad, um, went through into the, into the hall, sat down and started this three hour exam. Now, as many of you know, in Joburg, rain can come out of nowhere out of literally one second, it's beautiful and sunny, next thing there's this big storm clouds rolling in. And that's exactly what happened. These matrics, these grade 12s are riding this exam and out of nowhere the, sun, uh, the rain came and started raining on their bags in the quad outside. All their stuff was getting wet. And, um, the, and they couldn't leave. They were riding an exam. They couldn't just get up the hall and say, um, excuse me, ma'am, um, I just need to go fetch my bag. No, 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 you're writing an exam, you have to be quiet and that's all you can do. And so what happened was uh, they were writing the exam and this grade eight boy was just walking along, you know, minding his own business, thinking, man, it is so cool to be in big school. When he saw the rain and the people's bags in the quad and he thought, oh no, their bags are getting wet, I, I have to help. And there was no one else around, it was just him. And so he ran and he started picking up the bags and moving them under shelter into the hallway. Um, and he, what he didn't know though was a, as he was finishing moving all these matrix, uh, the grade 12 bags under the, 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 into the hallway out of the rain, a, a housemaster actually saw this boy doing that. 
Uh, he didn't know the housemaster was there. He was just doing it because he thought, shame, these poor metrics, their bags are getting soaked. I better do the right thing and love and serve them by moving their bags. Um, and so the, the housemaster told us the story the next day of, I saw a grade eight boy for no other reason than just simply wanting to love and serve those around us moving the bags of these boys who couldn't do anything about it. And so I, what I love about that story is that this, this, this young boy just did the right thing. He loved and served those people around him, not because someone was watching, not because he was told to do it, but just because in his heart, in his mind, he knew that he needed to help those who couldn't help themselves. So he, and he served those people. Now I want to tell you another story, right? So maybe that's a familiar story. Maybe you, maybe you've done something like that where you've served and loved someone for no, for no gain of yourself. Or maybe uh, you've heard a story like that at school where a teacher or someone has said to you, you know, I saw this amazing thing happen. But I want to tell you another story that maybe um, is a bit further uh, from what we know. I mean, it's about a king and his friends and servants, all right? And so there was this king, and he ruled over all all the land as far as your eye could see over all the oceans, it was his land, all right? And this king was a good king and a gracious king and a loving king and everyone loved and adored him. And so he had servants in those days. You had servants um, who did uh, work for him and he also had close friends, but the friends were also the ones doing the work for him. And um, one day this king decided to have a dinner. And so he invited his close servants and friends over and uh, they were having dinner. And while they were having dinner, just, just as dinner was uh, finishing, the king stood up and looked around at the table full of his servants and friends and said to them, guys, thank you and I love you. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash your feet. So the king got down on his hands and knees, got a, um, a jug of water and a bowl, poured water into the bowl, got a, and sat there and washed his servants and friends' feet cleaning them nice and clean, drying them on the towel that was around his waist. Now, what's so amazing about the story is, I don't know about you, but I wear shoes every day. My feet are maybe a bit stinky, but they're not that dirty. But back in this day when this king was alive, there, there, there were only dirt roads and there were no closed shoes, just sandals. And believe it or not, guys, but on, the sh on this road, there were no cars. There were just um, donkeys and horses. And donkeys and horses make some mess if you know what I mean number ones and number twos and that just goes on the road and so these people with their open sandals would walk on the dust and get ugly stuff on their feet it would be really messy and this king got on his hands and knees and washed their feet in the dirt and he didn't mind and he did it because he loved them so much now maybe you're thinking hang on that story sounds familiar and you would be right because it's not a story. This actually happened. The king, that's Jesus. And the, the friends and servants, those are his disciples. This story that I just told you isn't a story. It's history. It actually happened. And you can find it in your Bible in um, John, the book of John, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. And I want to invite you, maybe ask your mom or your dad, or if you, um, you, maybe you've got your own Bible, read it for yourself, or ask your parents or your guardian to read it for you. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful account. It's a beautiful historic event of how Jesus, who is the king of the world, who was before time, who is outside of time, he's just so amazingly big that we can't even really understand him. It's this beautiful account that the king of the universe, Jesus, would humble himself to wash the feet of those around him. And it's the most beautiful act of service and love that I think we can find in our Bibles. It is so, so beautiful. So I wanna invite you to pick your Bible up and go and read it, John chapter 13, verses one through seven. And so now what I wanna do is try and understand, okay, cool, so, how do we serve people then? Do we go around washing everyone's feet like Jesus? Do we go into school and say, hey guys, sorry, please can you all take your shoes off? I'm gonna wash your feet now. Yes, that is one way, but there's another really, really great way to, to love and serve those who are around us. I could give you a list, a list of do's and don'ts. I could tell you do for others what you would love to be done for you. I could tell you don't do things selfishly. That means don't do stuff just because you wanna get something back. Do whatever you do because you want to love and serve people. Um, but a list of do's and don'ts, at the end of the day, if you just tick them off, we have to try and figure out, was that the right reason or the right way of doing it? And so Paul writes about this. He doesn't give us a list of 
do's and don'ts. Uh, and I will give you some do's and don'ts a little bit later, so I'm, I'm going to challenge you to that. But before we get there, what I want to invite you to is have this thing that Paul writes about called the mind of Christ. Because the mind of Christ leads us to the actions of Christ. You see, Jesus didn't just get down on his hands and feet to wash the disciples' feet just because. No, no, because he had the mind that these people here are valuable and I love them and they are made in the image of God. And so I'm going to serve them. And because of that mind, he served them. And so we're going to try to figure out how do we have the mind of Christ so that we can love and serve all those people around us. So I'm going to read from us from uh, Philippians chapter 1. Uh, verses 1 to 8. And I see I've opened my Bible in Ephesians. So I'm just going to flip over quickly to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. All right, so I'm going to read this for you. This is what Paul writes about Jesus. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, that means being with Jesus, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. Make me happy by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Don't do anything because you want something back or vain conceit because you want people to see you. Don't ever do anything like that. Rather, in humility, rather humble yourself, make yourself um, less important than those around you. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Make other people more important than yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, in your friendships with your mom and your dad, uh, with your guardian, with your granny and grandpa, with your teacher, with your fellow pupils at school, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ, have the mind of Christ, who being in the very nature of God, who is God, did not consider equality with God, with something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Cross trainers. We do, we are cross trainers because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And what Paul is saying here is that Jesus humbled himself not only by washing the feet of his disciples, but also by going onto the cross for anyone who would believe in him. Anyone who would say, Jesus, you are my friend and I love you and I believe in you. I believe you are the son of man. For anyone who trusts in Jesus, we are able to have that example that Jesus humbled himself to death. He died on the cross so that we might know him. And by knowing him, by knowing Jesus, by having that relationship with him, by knowing that Jesus is your friend and that he's for you, you are able to have the mind of Christ. You are able to know that all the people around you, all the people that you come into contact with, they are made in the image of God. And because of that, we love them, whether they love us back or not, whether they do stuff for us or not, we love them. And because we love them, what do we do? We serve them. We serve those around us. We serve them because they are worthy of being noticed and loved and elevated. And so that's one of the easiest ways you can love people around you is by serving them. So again, how do we serve people? So I'm going to leave you with some practical examples. Um, so. I don't know where you, uh, maybe you, most of you have gone back to school, most likely. Thank goodness most lessons aren't happening on Zoom anymore or whatever platform you guys are using. I'm so glad that your computer screen has turned into people, which is a great chance because you get to serve and love people now. And so three practical things. And again, they're less about do's and don'ts, but more about the mind. If we can have the mindset of Christ, if we can see everyone as Jesus sees them, we are then able to do what Jesus would want to do. So it's about having the mindset of Christ here. All right. So first up, your teacher. Guys, my wife is a teacher. Uh, she teaches in a high school and she is probably the coolest teacher. No, she's the coolest teacher. I know. I know that. Uh, but maybe you have um, a cool teacher or you have a not so cool teacher. It doesn't matter because remember, we don't do it to get something back. We do it because we love everyone. All right. And so 
have that teacher in mind, whoever they are, and I want you to think of ways you could serve them this week. Not because you want to get something back, not because you want extra marks, or maybe you want to be seen as uh, the cool kid who helps the teacher. No, no, no. Because it's the right thing to do. So maybe you see your teacher carrying a heavy bag. You could run up to them and say, ma'am or sir, can I help carry that for you? Sure. And then you can serve them and help carry whatever they have to the class. Maybe you can even serve your teacher by being uh, disciplined in class. And when people are making a noise and maybe not really wanting to listen to the teacher, you can say, hey guys, please come, let's, let's listen. Let's listen to ma'am or sir. You can serve them in that way. So I want to ha have the mindset. I want you to look around when you're at school and how can I serve my teacher? Not for anything back, but just because I love them. Secondly, your parents or your guardian or your grandparents, whoever's looking after you, I want to call you to serve them. And how you can serve them is by doing what they're calling you to do before they ask you. Imagine that. Instead of hearing mom or dad or someone saying, please, will you take your plate to the kitchen after dinner? Just do it. Just stand up and say, I love my parents. They, get, they are just so good to me and I want to serve them. And so you take your plate to the kitchen before they even ask. And you don't just dump it next to the sink. You put the leftovers in the bin or maybe the leftovers go into the fridge. You put the scraps into the bin or wherever they go. And uh, you put the, 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 the dish into the sink or the dishwasher or maybe even clean the dish yourself. Imagine that. Not because you want your parents to give you more pocket money or you want them to love you more because they love you already so much. Not for that, but because you want to love and serve them. So think, how around the house can I serve my parents best? And then lastly, your friends. When at school or at someone's house or somewhere, when you're with your friends, how can you serve your friends? And how I thought about this was maybe sometimes someone comes to school with not enough lunch or they're still a bit hungry. You can serve them by giving them some of your food. I remember when I was at school, we used to do a swap one for one. And so I would have an apple and my friend would have a packet of chips. And I would say, hey man, can I swap you my apple for your packet of chips? And obviously he said, no, he doesn't want an apple. He wants his packet of chips. And so it was about swapping and exchanging. But what I'm talking about here is not even swapping or exchanging, just seeing someone who has need and you can serve them by giving them your apple or your packet of chips or half your, sa your sandwich. Or you see someone who has a real need, you can serve them by meeting that need. Again, not because you want something back, but because you love them. So have the mind of Christ, have the eyes of Christ looking around and seeing how you can love and serve people around you. So that's, that's what I wanted to leave you with, a little cross trainers. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm going to pray for us now that we can do some of these things because we have the mind of Christ. All right, let me pray for us. Oh, Jesus, we are just so, so grateful and thankful that you loved us so much that you would serve us by dying on the cross. And I pray now that as we go out into the week as cross trainers, you would help us Train in the way of having your mind, Jesus, and seeing people around us with your eyes and loving and serving them wherever we can. Help us with our teachers, with our guardians, parents, grandparents, and with our friends. Help us to see them as you see them, with love and compassion, and serve them, making them more significant than ourselves. We love you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us again, kids. We will see you next week when we carry on with our Cross Trainer series. Until then, have a great week and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.